are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. This is the program for November 2016. I'm taping it in mid-October, so we don't know the election outcome yet, and I'm hoping not to talk too much about that today because we've kind of talked a lot about that. But I have entitled today's episode A November of Extremes, and we'll get into what some of those extremes are a little bit later, but first, we start off by saying the beginning part of November does not look as rocky as the end point. So when I'm talking about extremes, yes, there may be some, but it's going to become even more extreme. So if it seems placid at the beginning, you know it's heading towards turbulent. If it seems wacko at the beginning, then you know it's going for off the charts. So, what is happening in November 2016? Well, we look first at the October 30th new moon, which I may have discussed briefly in the October program. But I want to mention here that, as always, the sun is going through Scorpio in the first part of November. It enters Scorpio on October 22nd, and it stays until the 21st of November when it moves into Sagittarius. So our new moon is when the moon comes through the same sign as the sun <clears throat> and passes the sun, and that's when we have a new moon. So it's a new moon in Scorpio. And the main features are Mercury, very close to the sun and moon. So that's a chatty planet. So there's going to be a lot of talk going on. And at least until and probably a little bit after the election, a lot of that talk will be about the election. And I expect somewhat it may shift after that to more things about economy and, who knows, stock market, <clears throat> commodities, interest rates, things like that, which are natural Scorpio topics. Scorpio is the sign that rules where money mixes and mingles, banks, insurance, stocks, investments, you know, mutual funds. Uh, taxes, and even money that is shared in joint bank accounts in a business or between partners, marital partners, business partners, and the um, inheritance, things like that. So those are all natural topics at this time of year. And <clears throat> the Sun, Moon, Mercury as a little trio is making a third of the sky called a trine, which is usually very um, harmonious or Gets, it greases the wheels, it gets things moving, with the planet Neptune. Neptune is moving through Pisces for quite some time. It started in 2012, and it's going to be there for many more years. It's very slow. And Neptune has to do with non-reality. So we may see more talk about deception, delusions about deception, lies, it's a planet about confusion, so confusion about lies, what was truth, what was lies. There's going to be a lot of talk about that. And Neptune is also a planet about fears versus faith. I always say they're two sides of the same coin. And when our fears come up, we need to flip that coin over and look to see what is it that we maybe don't trust enough or believe in enough. And if we do, that will quell our fears. 
Now, Neptune has been uh, traveling with something that's called the south node of the moon. And there's two nodes of actually every planet, but the moon is the one we mostly pay attention to. And what it means is an intersection between orbits. So the Earth is always going around the sun, but the moon comes with us. So it's going around the Earth as we're going around the sun. So there's two orbits, and they kind of intersect like if you put two hula hoops at an angle to one another. And when the moon crosses the Earth-Sun orbit, heading north, that's the north node. When it goes below the Earth-Sun orbit, that's the south node. South node shows what do we bring into the current situation, or really what can trap us and hold us in the past. So with Neptune, by that south node, these are issues around fears, delusion, confusion, those are our traps. <clears throat> this was particularly emphasized with the eclipse new moon on the 1st of September. So d things that have developed in September and October are very highlighted now, and actually Neptune reaches that point of the end of its apparent backwards motion, which it's been doing since... June 13th, it reaches that end on the 19th of November. Well, when a planet appears to change direction, and this is an optical illusion, that retrograde we've talked about, it comes to a stop called the station. Well, Neptune being slow, it stops in that station for a long time. Basically, it spends the whole month of November at nine degrees of Pisces together with that south node precisely. So, it gives us this sort of extra dose of looking at what are our illusions, what are our fears, where is our faith lying. So those are big, big themes. And Neptune and Pisces, its sign that it rules and where it's traveling, are both considered usually quite gentle energies. <clears throat> they are not the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, getting over a cold. So. The voice is a little weak today. Um, they're not usually things that get in your face or cause a big blow up or, you know, shake us to our bones. Those kind of um, situations or circumstances usually develop with Uranus, the shocking alarm clock, or Pluto, the planet of total transformation and change. So. Like I say, the sort of beginning part of uh, November, kind of calm. The south node and Neptune are exactly together on November 3rd, but they're really kind of hanging out together from some point in October and all through November. And as new moons go, that October 30th new moon, I would call it a pretty mild new moon. It doesn't have a lot of... Um, harsh factors clashing with one another. You know, many times we have what's called a T-square, planets across from each other and both perpendicular something else, and that's one of the hardest, or the Grand Cross, also very difficult. None of that for this moon cycle. The next moon cycle that comes in on November 29th, it does have a lot more of the friction going on in it, and we're going to see that the sun and moon at 7 Sag are making almost an exact 90 degrees called square with this Neptune, which is still at 9 degrees. And that means from late November going into most of December, we still have these same issues that we're dealing with. But what's interesting there, okay, Scorpio as a sign has a lot to do with things that are hidden rules confidentiality and privacy, but it's also ruled by Pluto, the planet of the underworld. So what's underneath the surface is very important with Scorpio times, and many times things are hidden then. When we get to Sagittarius, it's ruled by Jupiter, the biggest planet, and it's a very out-in-the-open sign. So things that are suppressed and shoved under the carpet during Scorpio come to light and are brought out for everyone to view when we hit Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is a sign very much about truth and oh, laws, things like that. And currently this year into next year, and I think even into a little bit 2018, 
<clears throat> but it, certainly in most of 2017 and 16, we've had Saturn in Sagittarius. Well, Saturn's the planet of karma. It says we get back what we put out. So if you're going to put out lies, you're going to get back lies. Or if you're going to put out confusion or fears, you're going to get back things that emphasize your confusion or your fears. When Saturn's in Sagittarius, it says we have to have reality check, Saturn, a reality planet, a manifester, about things that are considered common knowledge. Sagittarius is the sign that rules all forms of the media. So we have things being exposed that were kind of hidden, like say emails are something that's ruled by Sagittarius. It's long distance communication. So we've got um, the truth coming out about what's in emails from WikiLeaks, things like that. As I'm taping today, that's a big topic. So, <clears throat> Sagittarius, we're going to see more emphasis on that as Mercury comes into Sagittarius. Mercury starts the month in Scorpio. In, on the 12th of November, it moves into Sagittarius, and it's going to have a visit in two parts to Sagittarius because it's going to go all the way through Sag into Capricorn. Stop, turn around, come back, have a little more time in Sag, and then cruise on to Capricorn again. It's going to do one of those retrogrades. And I'll mention it now because next month for December, we may talk all about 2017. So um, Mercury enters the backup range on the 1st of December. Hmm. And it's going to actually go backwards on the 12th of December. It's going to stay backwards till the 8th of January and then exit that backup range on the 27th of January. Now, Saturn is also moving forward. So it turns out that Mercury will join Saturn on the 23rd of November, but it's before Mercury gets into that backup range. And I do believe it's going to um, maybe join. Nope, it probably won't join Saturn again. It's just going to be a one-time flyby. But Mercury is the messenger of the gods. Mercury rules news. It rules what's on the tip of all of our tongues. Uh, it's what's communicated and how we communicate. When Mercury's in Sagittarius, we usually communicate in very blunt ways. It's sort of like open mouth and insert foot. And <clears throat> that's very contrasting to when Mercury's going through Scorpio, and it's all about well, what can we conceal from other people, or how much should we reveal? Hey, guess what? It's all going to come out. So forget about trying to hide anything. Um, but again, Mercury in Sagittarius, um, I didn't mention the days when it comes back to Sag Sagittarius are 4th of January to the 12th of January. So you might see some things that are starting up here in the second half of November that are going to be readdressed there in the first half of January. And even in your own life, not just in the news, but things that you're doing, you know, when we approach a Mercury retrograde, we need to be careful and, you know, proofread everything good and, and certainly while it's retrograde, definitely. Because just otherwise there's things that are going to come back to haunt us that need to be corrected later. Okay. So Venus, around the same time that Mercury changes signs, is going to move from Sagittarius into Capricorn on the 11th of November and stay there until December 7th. Now, what's significant about this, Venus, while it goes through Sagittarius before it gets into Capricorn, Sag is an optimistic sign. It's usually very hopeful. And it's also a sign of international relations. Um, Venus is a planet about diplomacy, so we may see something going on with diplomatic talks internationally leading up to that 11-11 date. And then when Venus goes into Capricorn, it's not an optimistic sign. It's a realist sign, and it says, well, tell me what the hard truth is. Even if I don't like it, it's better for me to know what it is and then be able to deal with it. And Venus is a money planet, so we're going to see things where maybe there's more optimism about money in the first part of November, and then that kind of comes screeching to a halt when we come into the second part of November. And what's going to be really tricky is that Venus is coming up to join Pluto. 
Pluto has been going through Capricorn for years. Capricorn is the sign about systems and organizations and governments, rules, things like that. It's ruled by Saturn that I mentioned rules with just a few minutes ago. So when we see Pluto going through a sign like Capricorn, it says, I'm here to slowly and thoroughly change and alter all systems. Now, when we talk about things like structure and foundations and buildings, those are also ruled by Capricorn. And probably before Pluto is done with that sign, we'll have a bill in Congress that's bipartisan that funds a lot of infrastructure renovation. And that's perfect for Capricorn structure, Pluto transformation. So we may even see a little talk about that as Venus comes through, but <clears throat> Venus is usually considered a very good planet. The other one that's usually considered very good is Jupiter. And here's what's going on now. So Jupiter has come into Libra, ruled by Venus. This is a planet related to international things. It rules Sagittarius, so both Jupiter and Sag have international implications. And Libra, ruled by Venus, has a diplomatic sign, side, like I mentioned before, with Venus going through Sagittarius, Jupiter's sign. So we have, um, again, a continuation or a longer term, because Jupiter's in there for about a year, a longer term time frame for countries to come together and try to get along better. Jupiter and Venus, they're called the prime benefics. The ancient astrologers exalted them and said these were always going to bring good things. Well, think of Jupiter as the biggest planet. It makes everything bigger. So if there's a problem, it makes that bigger too. Maybe it's doing us a favor. It says, oh, well, I'm going to make this such a big problem. You can't ignore it anymore. You've got to do something about this. So <clears throat> Libra and Capricorn are signs that are at 90 degree angles to one another. And what's going to happen is here comes Jupiter in Libra to the 90 degree angle with Pluto in Capricorn. And this is where I'm talking about the extremes. Because Pluto is a planet of extremes and Jupiter is a planet of magnification. So it just says bigger and bigger extremes. When Venus hits Pluto, it's on the very same day that Jupiter makes that exact 90 degrees. I mean, it's strong coming in 87, 88, 89. It'll still be strong going 91, 92, 93. But the 90 is what we go, boom. That's when it's really hitting. And, <clears throat> oh, OK, maybe they're one day off. One day off. Jupiter square Pluto, the 24th Thanksgiving, Watch out for extremes of overeating. Always true at my house. And the 25th is when Venus comes to Pluto, makes 90 degrees to Jupiter, and just kind of like activates that Jupiter-Pluto square. Now, we think of Friday after Thanksgiving as that big shopping day. Maybe it'll be bigger than ever. Bigger bargains, more dollars spent, possibly. That day has the nickname Black Friday. And that's because when we talk about a store or a business, if it makes a profit for the year, we say they're in the black. If it makes a loss for the year, we say it's in the red. So many years, I guess it takes till around those extra sales right after Thanksgiving for the stores to reach that profit level for the year and be in the black. Now, there can be another connotation to that. I believe we use the term Black Monday for one of the stock market crash days. And I don't remember if that was in 29 or 87, whatever. But it can have that connotation. And this is what I worry about because Thanksgiving, the markets are closed. But Friday, the day after, the markets are open. And this is an extremely volatile combination involving the two money planets. Venus is more of a personal money planet. Pluto, the collective money planet, blown to extremes in a difficult way. And we're still in this period of what I started talking about at the beginning. Neptune, strong Neptune. And Neptune is fears. What drives the market? Emotions. Fear, 
one of the biggest emotions. And when people panic, they sell, even if it's not smart. That's what they do, they run. So I'm not sure, and I'm not a market analyst, I'm just looking at the astrology, but it looks to me like there could be some difficulties that bring us to a point of some panic sales around that Black Friday. Now, as this Jupiter-Pluto square is moving towards exact, on the 21st, <clears throat> let's see, I believe it was, of November, the sun is halfway between the two of them. And it's going to be 45 degrees to one, 45 degrees to the other. The 45 degree called the semi-square, it's just about as difficult as the square. So we also, that would mean the Sun and Merc uh, Venus are running at about 45 degrees to one another too. And that's fairly common, but they're banging into this slow planet difficult combination. So if the 24th is Thursday, 23rd, 22nd, 21st, that's Monday leading into Thanksgiving week. My guess is that that's where difficulty starts to crop up, maybe even on the weekend. Sometimes when markets open, they're already on a downtrend from what's been going on with the you know Asian markets or something like that. So probably that Thanksgiving week, which only has four out of five days for trading, and maybe even a shortened day on Wednesday, I'm not sure, probably not. It's not a great week, unless you like to buy when things are low. So if you have some money set aside, or maybe you want to cash out some money a little ahead of all that mess going on, you know, um, and then you can buy in. Full moons are usually a peak, and our full moon in November is on the 14th, a week ahead of that. So things kind of blossom and come to their height at the full moon. So that might mean on Friday, which would be 11, um, I don't think the markets are closed for Veterans Day, around Thursday, Friday, the 10th, the 11th of, um, <clears throat> maybe even, if Venus enters Capricorn the 11th, probably the 10th, is when it might be the height of optimism and some market highs. So take a look at that. Okay, what else do we have here? Well, since I mentioned the full moon, I might as well look at that just a little more. Um, the biggest feature is really the impending Jupiter-Pluto square. We have got a nice Mercury-Mars, two signs apart, called sextile. And that means kind of lively discussions and bright minds and good ideas. Mercury is in Sagittarius, so um, it's got kind of an astute intellectual side to it when it's not busy, you know, putting feet in mouths. And Mars will have just entered Aquarius. It goes in there from 11.9 to 12.19. Well, Aquarius is a sign of technology and electronics. Uh, inventions, things like that. It might be a very inventive time around that full moon, or what might be peaking coming into that for the markets might be tech stocks. Might start zooming around the 10th, the day after Mars gets into Aquarius. So take a look for that. Hey, if you make a lot of money on this, you know, you could throw some my way for giving you a little tip. Anyway, just kidding. So, um, we have all of the full moons now. We're in what I call a moon groove. And that's where the degrees of the new moons repeat from sign to sign for about six or seven months, and the full moons do the same. So our new moons are repeating at 777, and the full moons are repeating at 22, 22, 22. So the October full moon was the boom, big one where we had the moon and Aries together with Eris and Uranus, and it was kind of a... Women up in arms is what I was looking up for at that particular full moon. And they weren't literally taking up, you know, weapons arms, but that's around the time when big hubbub about all these allegations of sexual abuse by uh, Donald Trump were coming out in the media. Whether they're true or not, no proof of that, but anyway, the allegations were there. And it got women upset all over the place. And, you know, some women who are maybe 
independents or on the fence or even Republicans after that, they say, well, they're changing their vote for the woman who's running. And I expected that this kind of meant a height of power of woman energy. And we have a woman candidate. Okay, so when we come to the next full moon, November 14th, the sun and moon degrees are not hitting against Uranus and Eris like they were. It's like five signs away, one sign away, mildly adjusting, oriented, nothing, no big whoop. So that kind of like dies down a little bit. But what is interesting, the moon at 22 degrees of Taurus, okay, there's something in astrology called the Sabian symbols, S-A-B-I-A-N. I think it was the name of like a theosophical society in the early 20th century. Anyway, an astrologer named Mark Edmund Jones asked a clairvoyant, Elsie Wheeler, if she would please channel an image for each of the 360 degrees of the zodiac. So he had a stack of maybe three by five or five by seven cards. He wrote, you know, one Aries, two Aries, all the way through, <clears throat> shuffled them up, and he'd hold a card up and she'd say, oh, a flag turning into an eagle, or whatever she saw. This particular degree is called a jewelry shop filled with the most magnificent jewels. So it does have to do with abundance, wealth, commodities, things like that. And so if I'm right that this is around that full moon, a time of maybe a market peak before a market decline, that would be very fitting. <clears throat> so let's see. Okay. Well, I'll just mention a little bit more about how Jupiter rules Sagittarius. Pluto rules Scorpio. Those are our two sun signs during the month of November. And those are the two planets that are coming into conflict. So we have this big kind of standoff between forces of more darkness and hiding and forces of openness and truth. And that's what we're going to see some of around Thanksgiving week. Very exciting. So I do want to mention to you that on my website is a free download of what I call On a Page, 2017 On a Page. It shows the time frames for all the retrogrades. What you most care about might be Mercury. So you can come to astrologybooth.com and it's in the study booth. And there's a tab for On a Page. And you'll also find information about my new 2017 Janet's Planets calendar, which will be available in November and going forward. It includes that on a page page, and 2018 on a page even has in there. And it includes detailed information about all the new moons, full moons, everything that's happening. There's two more instances of Jupiter square Pluto. One comes up in March, and uh, I don't recall when the other one comes up. So you'll find out that in Janet's Planets, and I'll talk about it more in my program. So come back soon and see me again for Looking Up. Mm -hmm.